If you've been around the live performance world for a while now and used Ableton Live and walked into a situation with video or lighting, then you likely know the term LTC or linear timecode. Hey, this is Will Doggett. Today I wanna to show you how to use LTC with Ableton Live and why it's not as difficult as you might think it is. So let's get started. Now for starters, what is LTC? So like I mentioned in the intro, it stands for linear timecode and it's a audio version of SMPTE. It's essentially a way to keep in sync and sync audio and video together. So how it's typically used in a live performance production environment is you use and send uh, SMPTE from your tracks machine to maybe your media server or your video software or your lighting software so that things stay perfectly in sync. Now, if you've, you've seen videos I've done with say Ableton controlling ProPresenter, that uses MIDI and it uses a MIDI queue that when you send it, it goes to a specific queue in ProPresenter to pull up a slide uh, or to play a video file. But the way the LTC works is it sends this constant stream of hours, minutes, seconds, and frames to basically tell the video software or the lighting console, hey, this is where you should be. And then in that software, you say, at this specific time and in place, I want this cue to happen, or I want this cue to happen between this range. Now, uh, one, I wanna show you what LTC sounds like. So uh, if you got this turned up loud, warning, bring it down a little bit, but this is what an LTC file sounds like. Now, to me, it sounds a lot like a dial-up modem. If you uh, if you know what it feels like to be on the internet and have your mom pick up the phone and suddenly disconnect you from AOL, then uh, you're of a certain age and you know kind of what that sound sounds like. But within that sound, again, it's encoded uh, the messaging of a certain hour, a certain minute, a certain second, and a certain frame. Now, it's important to understand that Ableton Live does not natively generate or create LTC files. So if you walk into a gig and the production manager says, hey, we need you to control some uh, some video stuff, so send us time code from Ableton, we're looking for the specific hour, minute, second frame, um, don't freak out, but just know Ableton Live doesn't natively send uh, time code. But it's super easy. What you're gonna to wanna to do is use what's called a striped audio track. It's a fancy way to say a audio track with LTC recorded in it. Now here's the key. Again, I mentioned in the intro, people think of LTC, linear time code, SMPTE as being this mystical, powerful thing. Now it's powerful because it allows you from your Ableton session to control a media server or a, a lighting console and do really crazy things. But all it is is an audio file. So you wanna treat it just like any other stem in your set and you're gonna give it a separate output. But if Ableton doesn't generate it, then where do we get it from? So I wanna introduce you to uh, the kind of secret that no one wants to, to, to get out, which is a website that lets you generate uh, striped LTC or SMPTE files that you can load into Ableton Live. So I've dropped the link to this site uh, in the description, but essentially this is the LTC website. And again, this is kind of the hidden secret that, uh, that I know a lot of production people use. Um, it's a free site, you can donate. I would encourage you to donate and give because if the site goes down, productions across the world cease to stop running because we can't generate LTC files anymore. But essentially this is how it works. You wanna go in and you wanna figure out what frame rate you need. now. You typically think of frame rate in video. Don't worry, this doesn't mean the frame rate of your video that you're trying to control. It just means what frame rate uh, that software or that hardware you're hoping to control is expecting. So this is where you wanna coordinate with your production manager, your LD, the video director, and say, what frame rate do you want your time code to be? And then you wanna select that. Super, super easy. So for the sake of this, let's do 25 frames per second. Next, I'm gonna choose the sample rate. I'm just gonna leave this to 44.1. You can choose a bit depth. Again, I'm gonna leave this set to eight to the, uh, by the default. And then what you can do is choose a start time. So again, we're looking and talking about hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. I'm gonna leave this set just the way it is to starting at about 58 minutes. I need to choose the duration or the length of this time code. Now this really depends on how you're, you're time coding out your show. Um, typically uh, on a show, you might have someone say, okay, at hour one, we have song one, at hour two, we have song two, hour three, 
song threes, and so on. In that case, you're going to want to create song files starting at those different intervals for however long the song is, or maybe just default to 10 minutes so you have some extra room to play with. But it's possible you might just have one giant file. I, I know a friend of mine, Mike, is on a tour where he presses play and about 40 seconds worth of content is synced uh, from his DAW to the video service in the lighting console, right? And that's about a 40 minute SMPTE LTC file. So I'm just gonna leave again, this set to 58 minutes. I'm gonna just say five minutes, and then I'm gonna prove that I'm a robot, but they're not gonna catch me and realize I'm actually a robot. Hopefully they will know I am a human. Yes, I'm not a robot. I'm gonna hit go. Now, here's where you should be careful. If you click this file, typically it downloads and it opens iTunes because Apple's fantastic that way and suddenly starts playing. So what I would do is right click here and do download linked file um, as, and then you can choose where you wanna place that. I'm gonna put this right on my desktop now. So I'm gonna hit save, that file is going to download. Again, here's an opportunity to donate and help keep this service running, which is probably a good thing and we should all do that at some point. And now to use this LTC file with Ableton Live, again, lose the mystery of LTC. Don't think of it as some mystical thing. You're gonna treat it just like any other audio file. So what I'm gonna do is go over to my browser and then I'm gonna to go to my desktop and then I'm gonna drag in that file that I created earlier. So right here, LTC 58 minutes. I'm gonna drag this right in and I'm just gonna drop it below my stems and my session in Ableton Live. Now you can see this actually lengthwise worked out perfect because it's going a little beyond where my stems end. Uh, so it's given me a, a little bit of time to play with. Now, in most cases, what you may wanna do is add a little bit of buffer at the beginning so that Ableton can sync with your lighting console, they can um, lock in. In the case you wanna do that, what I would do is just go to the beginning of your session here, hit Command I, add maybe a measure, which is gonna add a measure of space, hit OK, and you can just nudge your LTC file over and then actually move your starting locator to there. So when you press play on that, it's gonna run SMPTE or timecode for just a little bit, and then your stems are gonna start. Now, again, don't be freaked out by this. It isn't a powerful, magical thing. All it is is an audio file. So the most important thing is treat this SMPTE, this LTC, like you would a click file in your Ableton session. You don't wanna send it to front of house the same way you don't wanna send click to front of house, and it needs a separate output. So on your audio interface, you wanna make sure that you can go in and choose however you're routing it, go to audio two, or if you're using sends and returns, make sure you route it to a separate output. And you wanna make sure that you can send that to an output that's discrete and separate from all the other stems in your set. And that depends on your interface. So maybe save that highest output on your interface so the LTC can be separate. Now, depending on your setup, video, lighting, whatever it is, there may be some extra configurations, but hopefully this is enough to get you started. Again, remember, Ableton doesn't natively generate LTC, so check out the link to the website, the LTC website, consider donating, that I mentioned below. Drop that right into Ableton, make sure it's unwarped, and then just send it out of a separate output. It's super, super easy, and in no time, you'll be able to walk into any gig and look like a playback pro. So now if you wanna learn about using Ableton Live to control almost anything, whether it's via MIDI or LTC, then head to fromstudiostage.com slash control. And I put together a list of all our courses that talk about using Ableton to control Resolume, PVP, ProPresenter, QLab, uh, you name it, we'll show you how to control it. If not, how to send the thing that that expects using Ableton Live. So for more info on that, again, head to fromstudiostage.com slash control to see all those courses. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial and I'll see you next week. Take care, bye.